I recently made a controversial video where I showed how I'm able to use my variable DC power supply to charge batteries and I explained how it doesn't matter how high I turn my voltage as long as I have my current set low enough. Well, after I made the video and uploaded, I read your comments, and I know some of you guys are absolutely convinced that what I was demonstrating is dangerous and it's going to cause people's battery to explode. Well, I think you guys either misunderstood me or you don't understand some of the fundamentals of voltage drop, current flow, and how it, the, the two are related. Basically, what I was showing was that if I set my current low enough, there's going to be a voltage drop, so the battery will never see such a high voltage going across it. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Here right now, I've got my, my uh, power supply set for 31 volts, and I've got the current down to just a few milliamps. So when I hook it up to the battery, you see what happens is you have a voltage drop. So right now, even though there's a potential higher voltage going into this battery, the voltage drop, because of the battery's own internal resistance, causes a, a much, uh, much lower voltage output. And so that's basically all I was trying to say. Now, if you're wondering why would you ever want to charge a battery in the manner I explained, well, the bottom line is you know, you wouldn't necessarily, except for a situation where, let's say, you don't really know what the ideal charge rate of a battery should be. And you you want to go somewhere and come back and, you know, hopefully your battery will be, will be charged. Let's say you turn the current down to 10 milliampers. You're not going to hurt the battery at 10 milliampers of current. Now, ideally, a battery's got an ideal charge rate you know, that's going to be far in excess of 10 milliampers. In fact, some of them uh, will will charge, you know, at a fairly fast rate, in which case, you know, it's, it's real convenient, but it, it could be dangerous if you apply too much current to a small battery, for example, that can't handle that amount of current. So really, you want to know basically what the ideal charge current should be. Now, I was just looking at a chart on AA batteries and to, to find out what, you know, the ideal charge rate should be for a AA battery, and it depended on the type of battery, whether it was, for example, a LiPo battery or a, um, a lead-acid battery or nickel cadmium, they all differ. But when I don't know, just to play it safe, I just turn the current down real low, and that's not a problem. Now, somebody had asked me, uh, can you charge LiPo batteries in the same manner as I described? And you can. The only problem is LiPo batteries that are made up of individual cells can sometimes get an uneven charge on each cell, that being the case, you might find yourself in a situation where one of the cells is so much lower that when you charge the bank of batteries up, you're not going to get a, a even distribution of power across each cell. In that case, you want to use a charger more like this. This is one a friend gave me, and it's a really neat little charger. What it does is it monitors each cell. It'll tell you the voltage of each cell in the battery pack here. It will actually drain off the excess current on the cells that are higher than the others. So when you go to charge it up, you get an even flow. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is that I would occasionally find myself in a situation where I'd get a battery like this out of a cell phone, and it would be old stock that the manufacturer sold me, and I'd go to hook it up. Turned out the cell phone wasn't able to charge it up. I, I meant to say cordless phone, not cell phone. And, you know, in a situation like that, what I found I could often do to bring a battery back to life was to apply a much higher voltage and current to the battery than it's designed for. But momentarily, I wouldn't leave it on a high current and high voltage, otherwise it's gonna get so hot it will explode. But I might turn it down, you know, or turn it up rather for just a few seconds at, at you know, five amps or something. Just enough to burn off the crystals that form in some of these batteries that prevent them from taking a charge. And I've even been known to um, hook them up reverse polarity when it won't take any current at all. And I've actually been able to restore batteries that way. Again, I do it momentarily. I might only do it for a couple seconds and, and uh, you know, I, I don't want don't to cause any problems. So that's, that's uh, the gist on that. Anyway, if you've ever charged a car battery, you know the amp meter on your charger will often go full scale <clears throat> as, the, <clears throat> excuse me, as the battery charges, the, the needle begins to move back down toward the zero. And that's because the internal resistance of the battery changes as it begins to charge up. And so the, the problem with charging a battery in the manner I described is once the battery is charged, it's going to keep trying to charge at that point at a very low current output. And I don't see it causing any problems as far as the battery exploding, but you wouldn't want to leave it on a battery charger 24-7 that's continually charging it even at a low rate because it's 
probably going to cause the battery life to be shortened somewhat. But I remember in the old days there were chargers that were designed to do that. In fact, I remember taking a party, an un un uninterruptible power supply one time, and I noticed it had a constant 3.8 volts going to the uh, lead acid battery. And uh, it was just somewhat self-regulating, I guess, because of the fact that the, you know, the battery resistance would be high enough at, after it got full charge, the manufacturer figured it would work. Anyway, for what it's worth, I hope I explained that a little better this time. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.